Hi guys, let's go over chapter 16 uh, very briefly with the reproductive system, the final system of our semester, our year, whatever. Uh, basic anatomy covered it first. Um, you'll review that in lab and uh, some of you are probably familiar with the majority of these structures. Anyway, hopefully you are. Um, but you want to be familiar with the cellular pieces and what's going on at the um, kind of microscopic level of your reproductive system as well as the hormones. So a lot of students take this chapter for granted and think, oh yeah, I know, you know where that goes, I know what that does. Um, but you don't actually think about why that's happening or, or where things are happening and, and the hormone and kind of chemistry behind things. So this chapter is going to emphasize that. So it, it's not as easy as you think it is. Um, the first um, structure or diagram there on 16.2 on page 472 is the diagram for how sperm is made. It happens inside of uh, those seminal vesicles within the testes. It's a kind of interesting process of mitosis and you see that uh, there is actually mitosis and meiosis that are occurring um, to create the sperm and you'll see that diagram for you on page 473. Um, you see all the different um, kind of intermediate steps and uh, how the chromosome number changes as those divisions happen. Then you see how the actual flow of sperm through the male reproductive tract on 474. 475 is showing you the hormonal control and the feedback loops that are involved. FSH, LH, testosterone are all the big players there. FSH and LH, of course, coming from pituitary. Um, influencing the creation of the testosterone. Then you get into the female reproductive system, basic anatomy is there for you on page 477, uh, the different parts of the uterus, um, uterine tubes, etc. Um, there's also the breast, so the females have a little bit more to the reproductive um, cycle or reproductive processes than males, um, and so you should be familiar with all of those structures. On page 477, 80, you see the actual development of the ovarian follicles. The ovarian follicles are the eggs that are released every month and you see that process, a good sequence chart can help you diagram that out. And then on page 481 you see the um, mitosis and meiosis that lead to the formation of an egg cell. And you can see that it's actually finished its um, division and development fertilization. Um, so in other words, the, the development of a sperm and an egg happen very, very differently. And um, I mean, you can even see if you uh, look back at the sperm development for every one um, spermatogonium, there are four sperm produced, but for every oogonium, which is the egg um, stem cell, there's only one ovum that's produced or oocyte that's produced. So um, that all has to do with the role of the egg and the role of the sperm in creating a new life. So you can also see what's happening um, in that diagram on 481. You also see what's happening to the follicle itself that's within the uterus. It doesn't just disappear, it kind of lingers there for a little bit and provides some hormonal support. Um, the reproductive cycle that's on uh, page 483 is really important to understand. This chart here is showing you the hormone cycles throughout the month. It's showing you the uterine cycle throughout the month. In other words, what's happening with the uterine lining as it's growing, 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 and shedding, um, and as well as what's happening within the ovaries during that month. Um, that little egg growing, the follicle growing, the follicle bursting, and ovulation, and so on and so forth. So this is kind of the put everything together diagram. It's showing you what's happening at each phase of the um, reproductive cycle. So it's really important to understand what's going on on this page. Um, and in the top corner, the feedback loops of FSH and LH with the different surges and how those things happen. Uh, the next little section is all about different types of birth control and um, the uh, kind of effectiveness of all of those different types of birth control and finally pregnancy going into um, the development of an embryo turning into a, a fetus and um, all of the different stages. Most students don't realize that fertilization typically happens in the uterine tube, not in the uterus. Uh, in fact, most of the time, if um, the sperm are available in the uterus, by the time the egg gets there, it's too late. Um, so for a healthy, uh, healthy um, embryo to, to be created, typically the fertilization has to occur within a couple hours, if not a day, maybe a day and a half of as soon as that egg pops out. So that's ovulation. Um, pretty, pretty small window there, which is crazy how many people get pregnant uh, unplanned. Um, anyways, there is a little bit of development 
uh, on the next couple pages talking about how that placenta forms, what the different parts of the placenta are, how the placenta nourishes the fetus, all important to understand. Um, and then the fetal circulation, very important. Some of the structures that you learned about in the cardiovascular system, you'll see again here. Um, in fact, the fetal circulation is very, very different because the lungs aren't working. So that Um, then you get into the hormones for pregnancy, the HCG, the estrogens, the progesterones, the um, CRH, the, um, the relaxin, all of those muscles that are helping prepare the mother for childbirth. And then you get into the actual labor process and the feedback loop that's there with the oxytocin and the brain and regulating those uterine contractions and how that baby is eventually expelled. Um, and then a little bit on lactation and breastfeeding and the oxytocin loop. Oxytocin being the, first of all, it's the hormone that helped um, expel the baby, so it helped with those uterine contractions, but it also helps um, milk release um, from the lactation, uh, the ma mammary glands. Um, obviously, age is going to play a huge factor in how your reproductive system functions. The reproductive system of a five-year-old is very different from a 30-year-old. It's very different from a 60-year-old or 90-year-old. So the reproductive system obviously has huge um, changes throughout life, and that's the last little piece of um, this chapter. So let me know if you have any questions, and keep up the hard work.